Sweet. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rebecca Mendoza Nunziato, and I work for House of Pod and Amped, uh, which is our nonprofit organization. Um, so I'm really excited that we are having this class tonight. We've been trying to go virtual with all of our things, um, as I'm sure you are all well acquainted um, at this point in time. And we've had a lot of fun. We've had people all over the country, uh, folks in our community that maybe couldn't have made it due to busy life or whatever other circumstances pre-pandemic. So in the midst of all the hardship and um, pain that is happening around us and in the world, this is one thing that we are grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, and folks like William have been so generous to offer their expertise and their teaching um, for our community as people are starting to think about how can I be creative? What can I do while I'm at home? Um, how can I tell my story? How can I tell other stories? The topic of, of today's is, uh, class and um, of course recording and other classes we've had available as well so um, I'm just here to say welcome to say thank you to William to remind all of you that uh, we do have many other courses that you can check out on House of Pods website and social media um, and to announce that we are going to have a really exciting summer of podcasting challenge and so we're going to announce that on June 1st so again follow along um, it's going to include a lot of resources, a lot of uh, just encouragement and fun ways to think about how you might want to get a show or more episodes out over the summer. So I just want to plug that, let you all know that's coming. Um, and thank you all for being here. So I'm going to hand it over to William. Um, I imagine he will do some presenting and then invite some Q&A, but I will let him kind of take the reins. And if you have any other questions or concerns, you can drop them in the chat and I'll be monitoring that. Um, and if I don't have your email address, which is unlikely unless you somehow found this through a friend of a friend or something, please do also drop that in the chat so we can be in touch with resources after the call, including the recording. All right, William, take it away. All right. Thank you for that, Rebecca. That was amazing. Um, welcome. Thank you guys all for joining me today. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I know, uh, things get a little hectic in the current, uh, current time frame. So thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about the art of storytelling and how to better engage your audience through through effective storytelling. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is William. I'm, a, I'm an editor of, among other things, I'm a podcaster. I'm a lover of all things culture, video games, film, uh, I, anything pop culture wise, that's where I'm at. Um, Malcolm Gladwell has the idea of like 10,000 hours makes you an expert at something. I like to think my 10,000 hours is in pop culture just where I sit. So um, one of the things I also do is I'm, a, I'm an editor and I'm a, um, I'm a podcaster myself. I have a show called The Hint of Fiction, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And one of the things I really like to focus on is the three aspects of what makes a good podcast. Um, marketing, of course, is super important. Um, editing or good sound is, is second to everything. But first, I always like to say that good content always drives good uh, a good audience you know to have a good to have an audience you have to have content that the audience wants to come back to and that's what essentially what we're going to be talking about today is how to engage your audience through effective storytelling techniques um like i said i'm working on a show called the hint of fiction and um like uh like a lot of kind of what's going to happen today is i'm going to be telling a lot of stories because as you probably know i like storytelling that's what i enjoy doing so like i said my show is called a hint of fiction the premise of the show is every episode we bring three stories to the table. Two are true, one is false. Um, now, I promise I won't be talking about my show too, too much today, but you can find it at hintoffiction.com. Last time I'll talk about it is my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, but I promise last time I'll mention it at all. But um, one thing that came to mind when I first started production about, it'll be about a year in September that we started doing a Hint of Fiction. Um, we were trying to figure out the best way to make fictional stories sound real and real stories sound fictional. And we kind of tried a lot of different things. We tried, uh, maybe we like act out these scenes. Maybe we focus on facts and we really just, we really just drill down on facts that we create on either our true or fake stories. Uh, we went through like three or four different iterations of the show and about six months before we aired our first episodes, about six months in pre-production, um, I realized something that I needed, like I said, I needed a way to find, make sure that my fiction was more believable and my true stories were more fictitious. Well, how did I do that? That was my problem. That's my conflict. This is what starts the journey. 
um, what, I, what I decided to do was um, really focus in on what makes a good story and how do I make my fake, like I said, my fake story sound true and my true story sound uh, more fake kind of in, in that genre. And so what I realized is that I needed to become a better storyteller. I needed to learn the elements of a story so that I could portray those, uh, whether that be a fictional story, a, f a real story, uh, a story about somebody's life, an interview, I needed to be able to have those storytelling elements in my episodes so that I could engage my audience better, essentially what we're getting at. So um, normally I do this with a live audience, but we'll do a quick poll. Um, if anyone wants to chat in just the chat real quick, what kind of podcast you have? If you have like a storytelling podcast or if you have like a, a real play or an interview type podcast, just kind of what your show is about, maybe like five words or less. If I could see, I don't know if I can see chat. Oh, there it is. I see a lot of, I see a couple of interview podcasts, storytelling, a reality dating show. That sounds interesting. I might have to check that one out. So, so everybody kind of has their own style to podcast. And you may be saying to yourself, well, William, I don't like, I do an interview podcast. I don't need to know about what a story arc is and what a hero's journey looks like. Like, I don't, I don't care about those things. You are 100% absolutely wrong. Ooh, what am I doing? Um, because storytelling is the essence of the human condition. This is how we perceive the world. We have been telling stories as long as we've been a society. Um, to give you a little breakdown, some of the oldest stories that we've been telling essentially since the dawn of time, um, the uh, oldest written stories, the Epic of Gilgamesh, which comes in around, I wish I had this memorized, but 2000 BC. We also have the um, oldest joke, which is a Sumerian joke that we found. It was about 1700 BC or BCE, I should say. Um, the, the joke goes in not so many words that a, a wife had farted on her husband's lap, which just goes to show that uh, farts are never not funny. They are always funny and will forever will be. We actually also see the oldest fairy tale, The Smith and the Devil, which comes between 3000 and 4000 BCE, which is also uh, something we're also going to talk about, which is the hero's journey or the, like a, a character arc. And uh, we see that in fairy tales as well as the Epic of Gilgamesh as one of the first um, uh, initial character or hero's journey that we're, we'll talk about a little bit about a little bit later. So, um, so essentially, we are built to tell stories. If you think about all of your favorite TV, movies, um, plays, uh, I always like think like albums. If you think about a musical album, they have a story that they tell you think about uh, my favorite being American Idiot by Green Day. They're telling a story about kind of this person's journey. Uh, music does that too. All, all the best songs that you can think about are have some sort of arc and how will have some sort of story. Even your memories. And this is one of my favorite things. If you've ever, um, if you've ever talked about uh, you do maybe like some jury, uh, jury duty stuff, or you've had to like be in a jury um, they always say that memory is the worst, worst uh, form of evidence because it's malleable, because our minds are actually create stories around what we actually see. And so our memories aren't actually what we think they are. They're actually stories that we tell ourselves. So from a very basic aspect, from a very human perspective, we tell stories. So what we're going to talk about today is essentially the structure of a story. We're going to talk about a few things specifically. We're going to talk about the structure of a story. We're going to talk about character arcs. We're going to talk a little bit about tone and emotion and how to make your show sound a little bit more full. Now, you may be asking yourself, William, I, I'm a human. I've been doing this. I, ha I tell stories all the time. You're probably absolutely right, and you're probably doing most of the things that I'm going to talk about today already. So what I'm trying to provide to you, though, as compared to saying you need to restructure your entire show, let's start from the bare bones, break it down, start over again, I want you to look at this as a, okay, I'm going to take one or two things from this presentation and hopefully maybe pick some things up and just become a better storyteller in general. Totally to all I'm expecting from you guys from this. So let, let's start out at the beginning as we would. So what is a story? Well, in not so many words, a story has a beginning, a middle and an end, but we can do a little bit better than that. Um, what is a story? Well, a story traditionally has five parts to it. It has the exposition, the rising action, a climax, a falling action, and a resolution. So let's talk about each one of those individually because they are inherently important by themselves. 
let's start with the exposition. This is traditionally known as the stasis. This is you getting to know a character or a story or maybe a little bit of world building if you're in some sort of fantasy realm. Um, this is kind of where you learn about the character and who they are and what their expectations are going to be. Es essentially, it explains the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why. Um, these are all important because this helps you flesh out the intro of your story. Next is your rising action. This always starts, every story that you've ever heard since you were a small child, always starts with a change. Something happens to either the character or an external thing happens that forces the character to go on a journey. Um, this section of the story also has all of the trials and tribulations that a character is going to go through. So um, if you think of a fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood, she has to go through the woods and she meets the, she meets the wolf and she has to get to grandma's house. These are all rising actions. These are all things that your, um, that your character has to go through and to get to the climax. So this is normally the conflict of the, of, the, of the story. This is where good meets evil, where there's that clash, where whatever's happening in the world is finally coming to a head. That's why it's always looked at as the point. Uh, my favorite example is when the Avengers fight the Chitauri, Loki in New York. After everything they've gone through, they've had to fight to get to this point, and finally we're going to see the, the big clash between good and evil. From there, after your climax, you reach your falling action. So this is the direct result of the climax. So after, after whatever clash happens, this is the fallout. This is the result of what happened uh, with, that, with that conflict. Um, for example, in Romeo and Juliet, it's finding Romeo and Juliet dead and uh, convince their families that they're dead and have them run away with each other. I'm actually going to close this because I can't see some of my slide notes and I need those. Those are important. Which leads us to the end of any story, which is a resolution. This is the completion of the story. Uh, the conflict happens, the hero had their journey, and we finally get back to uh, everything that we need to, and uh, now we have a resolution. This is not always considered a happy ending. Um, sometimes, you know, we, if we're setting up for a sequel story or setting up for a stuff, you know, we, we, might, we might throw some Easter eggs in there or something, or it's, you know, like maybe the hero didn't win, and then they lost, and we have to now see the conclusion of, that tale as well. So um, every story we tell, every story that you will ever tell has these five elements to them. Um, traditionally, um, uh, where, am I, where am I going with this? <laughs> so um, if, you're, if you're talking about maybe, we just had a Pirates episode in the Hint of Fiction. Like I said, last time I'll talk about it. Uh, we had a Pirates episode in the Hint of Fiction and I had to talk about a particular sailor, uh, William Kidd. And we had to talk about this journey as, as an arc where, where, you know, he became a pirate and then he went off and sailed and like uh, attacked and killed everybody. And then he was captured. And then there was this whole kind of secondary like resolution of like, well, where did all this gold go? You have to like, everything follows this journey. Um, like I said, why do you care about this? Like I said, <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. That's okay. We'll get there. So now the question is, does every follow story follow the same script, the same flow? Uh, absolutely not. Never. Um, so many good storytellers know how to tell stories in different orders. Um, if you think about um, uh, like a, a Mad Max, Fury Road, kind of post-apocalyptic, traditionally we start in the rising action. Something's already happening. People are already existing in a world. Um, in in a, one of my favorite movies by Christopher Nolan, Memento, we actually start at the end and work our way backwards. Um, my favorite way of doing this, and I'll give you a little, little secret into how I run a hint of fiction, uh, I traditionally like to use uh, the hook. I actually talk at the climax, or at the climax. So I give myself somewhere to like start off to, and then I go back, I tell, the, I tell what we get there, and then we come to the resolutions there. It's, called, it's a hook, and I love, to, I love to be able to use that as kind of a, as a way to drag, draw people in into my stories. So that is something that I do. You don't have to do that, but be aware that... Um, if you're going to tell a story, no matter what order you tell the story in, you'll want to make sure that you have at least these five elements in that said story. So this is very important. Next, we're going to talk about um, every story ever told in, in not so many words. We're going to talk about the hero's journey or the idea of a character arc. Um, uh, every comic book, every story, every... Um, 
every journey that you've taken with a character has had a character arc. Now they're not all the same. There are a lot of different ones. A villain's arc is going to be a little different than a sidekick arc versus a, um, oh, I don't know, like a, a wise old Obi-Wan style character. Those are all going to be inherently different. But they all, what these incite is change. And now we talked about a little bit between the exposition and the rising action. There's always a change, but there's always a change that there's actually a change at the end as well. We'll talk about that just a little bit. So to get a little bit of context to what the hero's journey is in 1948, Joseph Campbell basically did about a thousand hours of research on different religions, mythologies, um, storytelling aspects, different, just different parts of a story in all together. And he wrote this book called the hero with a thousand faces. And in that book, he basically shows that every, every hero ever all has the same journey between Gilgamesh and, uh, you know, Buddha and Jesus. And he talks about everybody. Everybody has the same journey. Um, he basically breaks the journey down into 18 steps, which looks a little like this. Now, this is great. I appreciate it. Uh, it's a lot and probably not something that you will need as a podcaster. But I do want you to understand the elements of a character arc. And so we'll talk about a much simpler version, uh, which is Dan Harmon's. Dan Harmon, about mm, five or six years ago, uh, about 10 years ago, wrote a very simp much simpler version. Uh, if you don't know who Dan Harmon is, he wrote all these shows and he's fantastic. And you should watch Community and Rick and Morty because uh, they're both great and they're really funny and I enjoy them all. Uh, Harmon Quest too, I mean, if, you're, if you're into D&D stuff. Uh, he wrote this hero's journey. And this is a little more of a simplistic version, but it still goes through the same process, which is eventually that a hero needs to go through a change either internally or externally to be able to produce something new in the world. And um, you guys probably have to understand that as well as somebody who works on interviews or somebody who has to tell stories about people in history, change happens. Change is the reason business starts. Uh, change is the reason that people go into politics. Change is the reason that anyone does anything. We process, that's, this is how we process change. And with learning about change, we have the ability to see it, an external change because of that. And that's really important. So um, for those of you who are doing interviews, and we'll talk about this in just a little bit, but um, understanding that change and that who that person is and how they change is kind of a, is an important aspect and is a really good way to tell a good story is if you can figure out what the change is, you can address it while you're talking to them. Um, speaking of Rick and Morty, uh, speaking of Dan Harmon, uh, he actually has an amazing, oh, I guess I can't play it here, but he has an amazing reference in one of his episodes. Uh, if anyone cares, I'll, I'll send the link out, but, uh, uh, it's, he literally makes a reference to the call to action, but I can't use it here. So sorry, guys. We'll, we'll do it next time. So a uh, story time today. I, like I said, we're going to be processing a lot of these things through stories. Um, so if you guys want to chat to me, I'm going to give you guys two options today. So we can tell, uh, I'm going to tell, I can tell one of two heroes journeys. We can either talk about Star Wars or we can talk about Shrek. So if you just want to go ahead and chat in the uh, chat and I'll kind of monitor that. Uh, if you would like Shrek, just put Shrek. If you'd like Star Wars, put Star Wars. How did I know? <laughs> Ooh, I got, I got one Star Wars. I haven't got a Star Wars yet, so I appreciate that. But uh, it looks like by a sheer majority, we're going to go with Shrek today. So uh, I think there's a split me on this. We'll go with Shrek. It's fine. Uh, so as, as everybody knows, the start of the start of the thing was starts with a smash mouth song. Hey, now you're an all-star Shrek's in his swamp. He is happy where he is. He's enjoying his life. He doesn't need anything as far as we know. Uh, and then all of a sudden Lord Farquaad decides that, Hey, I'm going to take all these fictional fairy tale creatures and put them in your swamp because I don't want to see them anymore. So Shrek wanting to get his swamp back decides to take donkey and they go on a journey. So they go to Lord Farquaad's castle and they say, hey, Lord Farquaad, I would like my swamp back. Uh, Lord Farquaad says, sure, you can have your swamp if you go and rescue Princess Fiona for me. So Princess Fiona, you know, so they have to go. That's the first, uh, first stage of their journey. They go through. They, uh, they finally get to, um, what's her name? Princess Fiona. Princess Fiona, uh, you know, is there and they save her from the, the dragon. Oh, no, this, you know, she's finally saved. So they're bringing her back and uh, Shrek realizes uh, through interacting with Fiona that he needs something in his life, that even though he likes to be alone, 
he feels lonely. And so as, as compared to wanting to be alone in the swamp, he wants to be with people. He just doesn't know how to because he's always scared people off. So with Fiona, we see a change in Shrek. Shrek is learning to become more sensible. He's learning to be around people. And, you know, at that, at that point, he be, starts to become a little more um, of it. He starts to make that change. From there, we get back to Lord Farquaad. We realize that, uh, you know, she's, he's going to go through the uh, Lord Farquaad and Princess Fiona are going to go through their wedding. Shrek finally stops the wedding. Farquaad gets eaten by a dragon. We sing, we dance, and then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. It's great. Uh, we have a great time. Happy ending for everybody. We all really enjoy ourselves. So those are essentially the essence of, of Shrek. If you haven't seen it yet, I would suggest it's very good. Let's talk a little bit about what happened in that journey. So you, first part of the journey, like, like in the uh, exposition, we learn about the character. We learn about Shrek, who he is, why he's doing the things he do, that he's alone, he wants to be in the swamp, that's all he wants. From there, the character needs something. Shrek wants his swamp back. Uh, so what does he do? He goes on a journey. Him and Donkey go on his journey. Then they have to search, they're searching for something. So at first they're searching for Lord Farquaad to get his swamp back, and then uh, eventually they have to go and find Princess Fiona. That is their search quest. Uh, this can always be an internal or an external thing. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be an external object that they're looking for, but it can be an external thing that they're looking to improve, which does happen from time to time. They find the thing. They find Princess Fiona. They start bringing her back. Um, they take that thing and they have to deal with the trials that return home. These are more of interpersonal trials normally. So you deal with, um, you know, kind of um, aspects of your personality and how you have to change to be able to become the new person you are. And then, of course, they return home and they restore order to their home. You know, Shrek gets the swamp back, but in, and then he learns how to be a better person and he finds Princess Fiona and he has Donkey and his friends and everybody's happy, happily ever after. You see this in most fairy tales. You see this in most comic books. You see this in most movies. It's a pretty standard character arc. And then, of course... I, I missed one, sorry. Uh, then they change because they have found the thing. They are able to invoke change either themselves or externally. Um, a lot of older stories, actually, they bring something back to a village and then everybody's happy. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is the first one that comes to mind because you know he brings the stones back and then the town flourishes again and everybody's happy. So, um, why, like I said, why do we care about the hero's journey as podcasters? We're telling stories, we're interviewing people, we're, we're writing fantasy. Um, you don't, uh, like I said, the character's hero's arc is about invoking change. And this is actually how we process change as human beings. So when we, when we talk about change, when we, we process change, this is actually the steps that you go through personally. Think about a time in your life where you had a, a serious decision to make, or maybe you had to go to a new job or, you know, something happened in your life, or maybe you had to stay home for three months because, you know, shit's broken, you know, whatever, whatever the instance may be. Um, this is traditionally how we, we go through that process. You, you're, you're you, you need something, something has changed. You have to figure it out personally. And then you finally become a new, better person because of it. And that's what we need. That's what we're trying to write as podcasters, because, because people process change in this way, you want to be able to make sure that your character arcs and your interviews are built this way so that people can understand the process just a little bit better. If you can give a more fleshed out version of this story, if you can, like I talked about with um, William Kidd, um, I actually use the hero's journey in this because he has this whole moment where he is, you know, he's captured and he doesn't know what to do. And that's kind of his, his return moment. Um, and he has this, this cathartic moment at the end where he's like, Hey, my gold's still out there. So he's able to still kind of tell his story. And even though he dies at the end, he's able to change. So um, being able to write from these specific questions is really helpful. So, or being able to write from a character perspective is really helpful. And understanding how this, these character analysis work is, is a very helpful thing. Um, it's much easier when you're writing fiction. So if you're writing a fictional story, you can kind of make these choices as they go. If you're doing something that's maybe more interview based, you're going to have to necessarily have to flesh these things out. Um, Mia Warren, who was the speaker a couple weeks ago, she had an amazing story about how to interview for storytelling purposes. And she talked about pre-production and like pre-interview and figuring out these, these, these spots or these, these kind of notes that you're going to want to hit to um, convince, you know, convince your audience that you're have something worthwhile to say, essentially. Um, 
storytelling for interviews. I, I talk about this a lot, but I, I, I want to bring a slide in there. Um, like I said with Mia Warren, what, what she mentioned is make sure you do pre-interviews, be able to talk to that person, figure out what their story is, what you should be telling about their story. Um, and then building those beats into some sort of character arc and into some sort of story and helping them we're asking the right questions to make sure that they're able to tell the stories that they want to take. So like I said, research is key on that. That's super important. So um, the last thing I want to talk about is tone. So we talked about stories, we talked about characters. This builds a, a kind of a mythos or a world around what you're doing, but you have to have the right tone for the stories that you're telling. So one of the things that's really important in tone is scene building. So a lot of people talk about show, not tell. And the problem is with podcasting, well, well not problem, but it is one of the elements of podcasting is we are a audio medium. It's sometimes hard to Ha be able to articulate how we're feeling or what we're trying to show um, through an audio medium. You have to use the right words. You have to use the right connotation. So building a scene is really important. And this idea of show, not tell, um, if I can tell another story, I'm sure you guys have all done creative writing classes or something of that nature throughout your time in high school, college, junior high, where, where have you been writing? Um, uh, I actually remember this story from seventh grade. I don't know. It's just stuck with me for some reason, but um, we were telling about like our favorite holiday event and mine was like the first Christmas I got my PlayStation 2 so many years ago. Um, and it, it was one of those things where I had started writing the story about like, oh, and then I walked downstairs and it was there under the tree and I was really excited and that doesn't do anything. That's showing you the story. But let me tell you the story. Let me, let me talk about it instead. So, uh, you know, I talked about the smell of the bacon I could smell as, my mom, as I woke up and my mom was making breakfast. I could, I could feel the cold of that cold winter's day and I put a, you know, extra layer on because I was freezing at the time. And um, being able to build these emotional cathartic moments into a story is very important because this allows you to connect with an audience. And which is kind of what I'm getting at uh, with this whole show, not tell piece is... Um, Emotion. Emotion is the most important thing that you can pull from your audience. If you can connect with your audience on an emotional level, you are going to have the audience want to come back to you time and time again. And I don't even mean in like a sad, dreary, emotional connection. I mean in like, if you tell a joke and that joke's really funny and you know, you have this emotional connection within that joke, it's super, it, it will connect your audience uh, much better than just telling them what to, what to feel or how to think. So I'm going to tell a story actually for my last set of stories. Like I said, I love telling stories. This is what I do for a living. So um, I'm going to tell two more stories this time oh, that, like I said, I'm gonna tell a story, but this time I'm going to tell two stories. This is actually a story of how my wife and I met uh, and I'm going to tell it the same story twice. And then you're going to tell me, and then we'll kind of talk about what the differences between the two of them are. So, I met my wife on the eve of my last day working at Disneyland Resort. Um, uh, about a f uh, we, I, ships in the night kind of a moment. We had not really interacted, but we just had one last late shift together and we were able to connect. So we reach out to each other. Uh, a few weeks later, we go on a date. Uh, six months after that, we've moved in with each other. Um, about that time, maybe a few months after we find out that, hey, we're expecting, which is, you know, very cool. So on April, 2017, my son is born, who is now a three-year-old, which blows my mind on a daily basis. Um, and so we, we start a family. We become a family at that point. Um, moving forward, we realized that California, where we were living currently at the time, um, wasn't really going to be the best place for us. So we decided to pack up all of our stuff, move across country. And now we're here in Colorado, where we've been living for about two and a half years now and I can't be happier. So that's the first story, but let me tell that story again. Um, it was a cold night on the eve of December 18th, 2014. Um, my wife and I were working at the Indiana Jones uh, uh, Temple of the Forbidden Eye, if you've ever been to Disneyland, and like ships in the night, we met. We had worked together for almost a year and had spoken maybe half a dozen words to each other. So um, me being Mr. Swall, you know, me being the guy I'm interested, I said, Hey, I would like your number. And then I never call her back, <laughs> which is awful. I know she tells me all the time. Um, two weeks later, she, she messages me on Facebook and says, Hey, like, 
what, what happened? I go, I got busy you know, life happened. And so we decided to go on a date. Date goes really well. We have drinks, we have fun. We, you know, go on a bunch of roller coasters. We actually, first date was at Disneyland. Surprise, surprise. Um, we just have these moments of connection where we, we understand each other better. Um, we move in, we find this place that becomes our little home for just a little bit. And then one of the biggest moments of my life um, happens where I find out that I'm expect that we're expecting and I'm over the moon. I, I can't believe that I'm going to be a father. Nine months later, I, I have my beautiful son, Benjamin, and he's now the light of my life. He is, I do everything. Everything I do in this world is now for him, uh, which in, on the same side was moving. Moving for me was a very emotional moment. I did not want to move. I, I love California. California is my home. But I realized that to be a family and to be able to have our own space and our own time and our own place, we needed to make a change. And so like the heroes of old, we make a change. We moved to Colorado and it has been the best experience of my life. We were able to grow and thrive and be able to create very cool things that we can do that we couldn't have done in California with the time and the energy and the resources and the money that we needed. So it's, it's, a, it's a change for the better. And if I had to do it again, I would do it all over in a heartbeat. Let me compose myself and scene. Very good. <clears throat> so uh, what was the difference between those two stories? Well, the first story, the, those two stories are essentially identical stories. One is very fact-based. That first one is, you know, we went this, this was the dates, we went this. The other one had more of an emotional tone to it. Um, I was using words like excited, enamored, frustrated, emotional, um, I was able to connect these, these pieces of these like scenes and these moments with this emotional engagement. And so that's what I want to stress more than anything. If you take anything from this presentation, from this, this talk that I, I'm doing right now, um, if you learn about story structure, great. If you learn about character arc, great. All that's important. None of it means absolutely shit, pardon my French, if you can't invoke your audience at an emotional level. Um, now, like I said, it doesn't have to be in a, a sad emotion. It doesn't have to be a frustrating, you know, it has to be some sort of emotion. If you can tell a personal story, if you can have some sort of emotional engagement in, in whatever stories you're telling, if you can help your interviewer have that emotional connection to whatever they're talking about, you're going to be a million miles ahead of anyone else who is doing this. Like I said, show them how you're feeling and do not tell them. Show them how to feel and you'll be way off of it. So I always like to end my presentation and this, I apparently have to fix this slide. Um, what is the oldest profession in human history? I know people say prostitutes and blah, 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 and agriculture, it's storytelling. Like I said, we have been telling stories longer than we have been a society. This is how we process things. This is how we engage in the world. And you guys as podcasters are standing on the shoulders of giants. We we are so lucky to be in the time that we have, that we have all of these people who have, who've been telling stories forever. Dante Alighieri, um, William Shakespeare, Stephen King, uh, even people that maybe you don't like, Stephanie Myers and, and others, but they have set the foundations for us to be able to create the stories that we want to create. And so go ahead, go out there, take your podcast, make the content you want to create, tell the stories you want to tell, engage your audience with that emotion, use those character arcs, use that story analysis and make the best goddamn podcast you can make. Because if you can do that, you're going to be better off than half the podcasters out there already. So uh, with that being said, I'm, uh, I'll stop, uh, I'll stop yammering and we can talk to a little bit of questions. Um, yeah. We'll just kind of go from there. Well, first of all, thank you so much. You're I welcome. I, I, um, I, so I, sorry. No, I was just going to say, it's so good to have um, a new voice, at least to me, teaching storytelling. Like there's so many different ways to think about it. And I, I love all the different references you have and the way you brought in your personal life and storytelling. So thank you so much. My uh, pleasure. Yeah, let's open it up for questions. Yeah, um, who's got, who's got questions? Just jump on in. There's a few of us that we can go ahead and you can unmute yourself and hop on in. Um, and I'll also say, feel free to ask more general podcasting yep. questions because, yeah, William's been doing this for a long time. So. Yes, to, to give a, like I said, I'm also an editor and a content consultant. So if you like, you know, if you want to know, like, what's your best, what's your favorite mic? What do I use? Or if you just want to talk about, like, what your favorite movie or 
if you're enjoying the new season of the flash we can talk about whatever i like i i don't mind anyway so Nobody has any questions. That's totally okay. We'll call this early. Um, I did want to mention this is all my social media platforms, my website. Um, I'm actually doing free consultations right now. So if you want to chat in more detail, like on a one-on-one -on -one basis about storytelling or your podcast or just anything in general, like I said, if you want to talk about the new season of Flash, which I'm way deep in, I, I don't mind that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing free consultations and just take that bit.ly slash leisureman consultations and we can chat on a more uh, I guess, uh, uh, intimate basis of the phrase I was looking for. So. Good. I will make sure all the recording of this. Um, I know sometimes it helps me after I've listened to it live to go back and listen again and take some notes mm -hmm. for my own show and my own purposes. Um, and we are so glad to have all of you here. We're going to have a women identified podcast incubator, or sorry, excuse me, a women identified podcaster happy hour, um, in a couple weeks. And so for those of you that would like to join for that, you can find that online. And then we have all sorts of other good events coming up. So thank you again, William. I'll go ahead and close the recording and, um, our class for today and stay safe, stay well. And thank you all for being part of this today. Thanks guys. It's been amazing. Yeah. Thank you.